Good morning, church. Congregation, Congregation please stand for the opening hymn. seated. We take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you who are here to worship together on this eighth Sunday after Pentecost, even as we celebrate Social Concern Sunday this morning. We also welcome those who are joining us through the online service platforms. We especially welcome our speaker for this morning, Dr. Edward David Darson, who is here to share the Word of God and to minister to us this morning. And as we come together, we are reminded that we are here to grow in Christ and to glow for Christ. And may Christ's likeness and Christ centeredness be the focus of our life and our church. The opening sentence from Luke chapter 10, verse 21. Luke 10, 21. At that time, Jesus, full of joy, through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. Let us pray. O oh God, our gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege that you give to us to worship together, to receive your word and sacrament, to be empowered once again to live and love you, O Lord. We thank you for the grace that you've given to us as we come together to worship and honor your holy name. Continue, Lord, to lead us. This we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord be with you. The collective purity together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Congregation, please stand as we go into a time of praise and worship. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we come together to worship the Lord. We are reminded that Jesus is the light that brought light to this dark world. He is the light in darkness. Let us look to Him. Let us worship Him. Father, we thank You. We praise You. We worship You for sending Your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus, to be the light in the midst of our darkness, to be the light of our life. We want to thank You. We praise You, Lord. Let's open our lips and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming into this world to be our Savior. We want to praise you. We want to worship you. We want to glorify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Father, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Light of the world. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see it. Yes, Lord. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see beauty. Beauty that of the world, light of the world, open my eyes, let me see beauty that made, beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of the lives that we here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am, here I am to worship, here I am to here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, lovely Lord, you are worthy, all together to me, King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Here I am, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, we're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me, I'll never know how much. On that cross, I'll never know how much it cost. Up on that cross, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my. 
together wonderful to me sing again here i am to worship here i am to that's what we are here lord we are here to worship you you are our god You're truly wonderful. And we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. You are worthy of praise. Let's open our lips and say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father Jesus. We give you praise for all the goodness. Thank you, Father. For all your mercies. Yes, Master. That's what we are here to do, to give you thanks. I come before you today And there's just one thing that I want to say Thank you, Lord, from the bottom of our heart Master, for all the blessings that I cannot see, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm. I'll bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So many good things you've done for us. For all you've done in my life You took my darkness and gave me your life Thank you, Lord Say thank you, Lord You took my sin and my shame Yes, Lord you took my sickness and healed all my pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I'll bless your name. Unconditional thank love you, of Christ. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. We thank you for that love that has thank been poured Jesus. into our hearts by thank your you, Holy Lord, Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord, continue thank to you, Lord, grow yes, in that love. Thank you, Lord, to reveal that love. Yes, Lord, your love. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let there be love shared among us. Oh Lord, to arise, give us 
our love to you and express your love Lord to all of humanity and use us as your instruments to truly Lord bring about transformation and change for your glory for your praise let there be love let your love Lord lead us and this we pray and surrender in Jesus name Congregation remain standing for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The continuation of the Holy Gospel as it's written according to St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 16 to 24. St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 16 to 24. Then he said to the disciples, Anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me, and anyone who rejects you is rejecting me, and anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your name are registered in heaven. At the same time, Jesus was filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit, and he said, O oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise 
and clever and for revealing them to the child light. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. My Father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then when they were alone, he returned to the disciples and said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you have seen. I tell you, many prophets and kings long to see what you see, but they didn't see it, and they long to hear what you hear, but they didn't hear it. This is the gospel of Christ. Good morning, church. It's our privilege to once again be in God's presence, to hear God's word. And at the same time, we have a speaker this morning with us, Dr. Edward Devadasan. And uh, as I asked him, how should I introduce him? There's the more official part, and there's also the personal part. He's a friend of mine during my seminary days, and we kind of coincided, although he was my senior, uh, not only in terms of age, but also in terms of academic studies. We're thankful for the friendship that we have forged through the years. But currently, he serves as a social activist, as a lecturer. Uh, he serves in many uh, uh, NGOs and organizations as he brings about the message of God and the love of Christ to many places. So we are thankful to have him with us to share the word. Without further delay, let's put our hands to welcome him. Uh, good morning, church. Please allow me to take out my mask, yeah? <laughs> okay. Um, it's truly nice to be here again. Uh, I've been here before. Uh, this exact place, we had our Bible study, uh, I think about seven years back, huh? five to seven years back. Um, yeah, uh, and, and it's good to be back. It's, it's nice to see uh, the church again. And uh, thank you, Pas uh, uh, Padri. Uh, yeah, we call pastor, right, in Madrid's church. So uh, he's, uh, he's a good friend of mine uh, uh, and, and a fellow worker uh, in Christ. Okay, and uh, thank you, Auntie Jasmine, who, who <laughs> pushed me to the sea today. <laughs> she insisted uh, uh, of me coming and preaching today. And it, I count it a privilege, you know, it's a joy to be here. Uh, I was in the church, okay, uh, I am still in the church, uh, but not as a full-time pastor. Um, yeah, for 19 years, I was pastoring the Tamil, in the Tamil Methodist Church. And um, there came a time when... Um, uh, we were hearing preachings about uh, going to marketplace, right? Marketplace evangelism, go, go out, reach out to people. There are many people in need outside and whatnot, right? And I was um, hearing such messages and started to step out of the church. When I stepped out of the church uh, in a little way, I was in Penang then, uh, when, I, when, I, when I start to work with the outside world, uh, going to the schools, and uh, I was doing work at the school. Uh, in, in fact, churches are the ones who started schools, remember? Okay, and now our touch in schools have, uh, is, is no, no longer that strong, right? Uh, even though we have our buildings and uh, whatnot, right? Uh, so I went into the schools and, and started to minister to the, uh, the, the children there and uh, the parents. Uh, the low-cost uh, flats area, uh, and that inspired me so much uh, that led me to do my studies in social work. Okay, I did my master's in social work uh, when I was in uh, Penang, uh, USM, and uh, from then, uh, my eyes were always outside the church. So I would always call my church members, uh, but even though we are very close, we, 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 we have a very good relationship. So, you know, I always like uh, push them also to the, the world, okay, to see what's really happening. And uh, being in the world, we can see um, how much, how many, uh, you know, the, 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 the need that is there, right? That's, 
the, the harvest is so much and, and uh, that again pushed me to study uh, when I was down here in uh, KL. I was transferred to KL then. Um, again, uh, I was doing my studies here at UM. Um, and from then, I, I decided, okay, it's time for me to be out, okay, to, to reach out to the people outside. Uh, more than the church, okay, I needed more time, uh, so uh, it somehow like pushed me, nah, right? slowly I was out, uh, I, I, uh, not with any ill feeling or fight or, you know, uh, uh, breaking the church, no, 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 <laughs> I didn't do that, okay, I, I nicely told the church, you know, I, I can't fit in uh, at this point of time, so um, they allowed me to like move out, okay, uh, of course we have to like uh, move out in a nice way, right? Okay, and uh, then I was so worried. What's my life going to be? You know, um, uh, when I when I resigned, I said until thirty first of December. Okay, then uh, what's my life going to be from the first of January that year, two thousand seventeen? What's going to be? And 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 I just trusted the Lord. So in one service on the on the the last service of the the year. The Sunday, I was sitting in a church, um, and, and the Lord was speaking to me. He said, uh, fear not, I will lead you, okay? And I was like telling God, God, 19 years I was in the church, la. <laughs> who going to take me? Who going to take me, you know? What's going to happen to my life? Then uh, that's where, uh, you, miracle, you know, it's grace and it's uh, absolutely, it's a miracle. On the 2nd of January, uh, uh, some of you may know uh, the BAC owner, right? Uh, Mr. Rajasinghama. Uh, he called me. He called me, you know. I was like shocked. I mean, uh, uh, prior to that, I met him uh, in one of the cafes. He said, uh, I thought you were joining us. <laughs> you know, uh, join us. Join our team. I said, I've not been for interview. How? He said, come, come and see uh, so and so on the uh, 3rd of January. It was like, Lord, I got no, no words how God leads, right? And um, I joined them as a CSR, uh, uh, one of the CSR uh, manager, okay? And um, that was good, okay? CSR is Corporate Social Responsibility. It's more on social work again. <laughs> Mr. Rajasinghe uh, told me, you know, in the corporate, it's not so easy. It's, not, it, it's, it's different from what you were in the church. It is completely different, right? Uh, you, you got to go slow, he said. I said, okay, I'll take it. And then uh, from there, uh, then I wanted to lecture. Uh, lecturing was my passion. Um, teaching is my passion, not lecturing. <laughs> teaching is my passion. And uh, so, um, yeah, I was doing part-time. A part-time lecturing, and after that, um, yeah, and, and I went in full-time for lecturing, uh, no, not in BAC anymore, uh, and currently I am with Ta UC, Ta University College, yeah, in Stapa, uh, as a lecturer, and uh, it's a blessing, it's a blessing. I, I see how God leads and guides us, uh, and our God is real, you know, the God who you, whom we are worshipping today, He's real, uh, never doubt Never doubt. And His grace is true and is sufficient for us. Amen? Amen. Yes, indeed. Okay, now, uh, that's a little bit about me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> good friend. Okay. Uh, it, it, yeah, I learned a lot from your pastor. Uh, he's a very humble and uh, very nice person um, since the college days. Uh, it's a blessing to know him. And also, um, uh, some of you who are seated here. All right? Now, uh, before we go into the Word of God, let's, let us bow ahead and look up to God in prayer. Shall we? Come. Father, we want to thank you for giving us this opportunity to hear your Word, bringing us together here to worship you and to, have, uh, to share your love with one another. Father, we pray that you will speak to us. Uh, we pray, Lord, that your glory will cover us Lord, give us the clarity of mind and, Father, to, to accept your word. Lord, and uh, minister to us. May your spirit minister to us. 
We thank you, Lord. Cover me with your precious presence and may the words of my mouth be acceptable and projected your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, how many of you are teachers here? I'm sure you, there's teachers, right? Teachers? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Lecturers and teachers, huh? In the academic world today, in the academia, there are many new concepts given, right? And after the COVID, I mean, after the COVID, uh, there were even more new things coming up and expectations. And uh, sometimes it's unrealistic, <laughs> very unrealistic expectations, okay? Uh, and uh, many concepts are being introduced, okay? Uh, for example, uh, 21st century classroom they talk about, right? Okay. They talk about outcome-based learning. They talk about ODL, uh, online distance learning. And all this we have been talking about. You know, in fact, since 2013, our government is, uh, has been talking about all this ODL, technology in education and whatever not. Okay? But, thanks to COVID, oh, as much as it does, so much of harm, so much of harm to the world, and uh, I've lost two loved ones during, uh, uh, to COVID, yeah? So it, it is painful, but thanks to COVID, it helped the academic world to move forward on many things. Academic, ad, academicians were pushed into the, <laughs> the sea to swim, right? We were not prepared, but we were pushed to the sea to swim, okay? And uh, we were stranded often, and we had so much of problem, okay? See, these concepts and uh, the many concepts, the vision, goal, planning, all these uh, we are very good at, especially in Malaysia. Very nice blueprints we put, very nice acronyms we come up with. We have uh, fantastic plannings. We spend billions, uh, millions, not billions, uh, millions in, in all this uh, planning and designing of things. Agree? Agree? Yes. Yeah, similarly, in the church also, we do that. We all put nice plans. We, I, I saw your team, very beautiful. Huh? The designer done a very good job. Okay, grow in Christ and glow in, uh, for Christ, you know. Very beautiful, you know. We, uh, I'm sure you'd have uh, uh, give much thought. Um, you call it PC, uh, PCC? PCC, yeah? Okay, uh, your, your parish committees, uh, they came up with nice ideologies, very interesting uh, concepts and vision, teams and whatnot, right? We talk about many things. We talk about many things, right? We have, uh, uh, but when we look back, um, in our Christian journey, yeah, when we look back, have we lived what we have planned? Uh, being in the church, okay, since birth, okay, very active in the Methodist church, not since birth, lah, but then, you know, uh, my teenage years and, and after that, I've been very active in the church. So, uh, our, our church is a very huge, beautiful church in Ipoh, Buntong Church. Some of you may know, right? I'm sure you all will have connection, I know. <laughs> okay? They will put nice, beautiful teams every year. Every year, the, during the Lent will be one team. You know, during the Christmas will be one team. But... To actualize the team, hardly. Have you all asked why? Have you all asked why? And um, interestingly, yeah, uh, this has been going on and on and on and on, and church is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, do you realize that? Uh, you know, in the West, churches are empty. Okay? And, and churches are becoming smaller. Where is, what happened? Very interesting goals. Very interesting concepts. Okay? Visions. Preachings. Wonderful teachings. 
Okay, I always tell uh, my, my fellow uh, workers, you know, preach well huh, in the church. Make sure you all preach and teach well in the church. Okay, I, I, I'm sure I would have uh, told your pastor also, all right? We, we, we preach, we teach, but why? What's happening? What is happening, people of God? What is lacking that we are not achieving what we put? What is happening? Why? Why we, we, we have nice visions, but we have never uh, fulfilled or, or attained or achieved our visions? Why? Ask why, people of God. So, uh, um, um, interestingly, uh, uh, th- that's what we are going to look at today. Okay, uh, th- interestingly, in the Bible, uh, Jesus show practical ways to live a godly life and also to journey with God. Okay, to achieve what uh, we should be achieving. Okay, one of the passage uh, from which we are going to learn to get, uh, together today, it is there. That's what we are going to look at. Huh? What we should be doing instead of just talking and being, a, uh, being in a dream world with, with big concepts and ideologies, theologies. Okay, uh, uh, what we should be doing instead of just talking and being in a dream world. We talk about heaven, eternal life, you know, all these big, big concepts and beautiful things. We, we, we talk about blessings and uh, satisfaction uh, and whatnot, right? But look at what Jesus' method was to inherit all this. Let's look at what uh, the methods Jesus used. Okay, now uh, I'm going to uh, uh, share three things, three actions and its outcome. Uh, and in his method of living, uh, in his method uh, of living a Christian life uh, through this passage. Three things, okay? Please pay attention to this and let's try to, 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 to uh, use it in our life, apply it in our life and, and glorify God. Okay? Now, number one, what is the method Jesus used? Verses 1, uh, from the passage that was read to us, okay, um, verse, uh, verses 1 to 16, there was empowerment uh, happening, right? Jesus was empowering the disciple, the 72 people, okay? The, the, the more than the 12, uh, now 72. Jesus is like, uh, Jesus is empowering them to send. Now, empowerment, Okay, how empowerment happens? It's by giving clear instructions. Okay, Jesus is giving clear instruction and empowering the people to begin the journey. Now, to begin our journey with God, to be a blessing. A nice songs we sang just now, huh? especially the first song, the hymn. Huh? Like, uh, 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 in order for us to, to be out there, be, uh, to, uh, to be a blessing to others, uh, in order for us to, to, to actualize, actualize our concepts, our dreams, our visions, people of God, number one, we need to be empowered. And Jesus was giving clear instruction and empowering the people. Now, what are the things that he was talking about? There were four areas he was empowering them. Uh, very briefly, uh, four areas he, wa- he was empowering them. He, wa- he was empowering them and teaching them, instructing them, and showing them what is ahead. He's showing them what is beside, what is within, and what is behind. Okay, now, the next slide. What is ahead? He's empowering them and showing them that there's opportunities ahead. You see, in, in instructions, when, you, when, when, when Jesus is teaching, in, uh, when he was, he was empowering people, he, is, he, he showed them that uh, there's great opportunities, opportunities ahead. Great opportunities. The harvest, the harvest field he showed. The people in need, he, he was talking about the harvest is plentiful, he was telling people. And, and uh, I'm not going to go in detail. It, all this can be a one, one. Each, each, each slide can be a sermon. Okay, I'm not going to go in detail because I have other things to share with you. So he was showing the opportunity. Number two, he was showing uh, uh, what's ahead. Ahead of them, there's danger. There's danger. The wolves are there. Right? 
verse 3 it says and and number 3 what was what was uh, ahead the possibilities uh, the possible responses of people how people are going to respond all this jesus was instructing the people okay now to empower them uh, next slide and what is beside them jesus was showing them what is beside them right the next slide huh? he he showed them that um, there's a partner a partner in crime he's sending two by two right right there's another person coming together with you he said beside you there's another person a, a friend a, a, another fellow disciple is coming together with you he showed that uh, uh, who's going to go together and uh, from matthew chapter 10 uh, verse 20 he reminds that the holy spirit is going along with us he's beside us people of god uh, this is the kind of teaching he was giving you know he said what's what's um, um uh, what's ahead of you this 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 there's opportunity there's danger there's uh, possible responses these are things ahead ahead of you what's beside you you have another friend a disciple a fellow worker who walks with you now uh, uh, beyond that okay uh, you also have the spirit of god the holy spirit uh, to to uh, partner in this mission to speak for you uh, speak on your behalf or or, or uh, teach you what to speak that's what the matthew uh, 10 20 said he will he will teach you what to speak right then what else he uh, was empowering what is within you okay the next slide huh what is within you okay the needs he precisely know our physiological needs jesus knew the our, our uh, the people's physiological need huh? physiological is the basic needs of people we need food we need clothes we need shoe we need money to eat you know uh, these are the physiological need and and that's what he was telling don't take any of this i will provide is assuring that he will take care uh, and take care of our needs according to his riches in glory right okay uh, matthew 6 25 talk about it right i'm sure A any new believers here any anyone anyone no okay uh, i'm sure you all would have heard this bible verse right i don't want to bore you uh, reading the verse again okay what's matthew 6 25 What's Matthew 6.25? Oh no. Read. Matthew 6. Ah. Yes. You don't, know, don't need to worry what you're uh, thinking, what you want to eat, what you want to drink to be alive. Okay? Ah. <laughs> uh, <sighs> right we all hear this verse we all know uh, i mean we have heard multiple times we have heard about these words but jesus was teaching his disciples and empowering them and reminding them what is within he knows what is within and he said i will take care of the needs number four okay uh, what else he was um uh what is beside? Okay, or, or what is behind? What is who is behind or what is behind? He he he, he was empowering them and saying who uh, and reminding them who is behind him, uh, behind them. Okay, uh, verse one. Uh, if you read verse one uh, from this uh, passage that was read to us, um, Luke ten. Okay, you you will see. He is sending them ahead of him. That means he is not going to stay, uh, stay back and he's going to sleep at home. Jesus is not going to stay back and sleep at home. Huh? He said he's sending them ahead. That means he's going to follow them. He's going to follow them. Okay? And he's reminding them, I'm, I'm, I'm coming at the back of you. No, I'm, I'm following you. Who follows? 
Remember the good shepherd, shepherd story and all that? Yeah? Being a good shepherd, he follows behind them. And, and that's how he empowered them, give them the courage, give them the, 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 the uh, assurance and um, give them the confidence that he is with us. With us. Now, this is not a problem in our, our churches today. Today, we are too much empowered in the church. Right? We always hear these kind of messages, right? Blessings of God. God is with you. He will take care of you. Unless you experience, you will not know the know it. Huh? We have been always hearing this. Thanks to our church, thanks to your Padre and, and whoever preaches. We all are being empowered. Uh, if you are not being empowered, please, in these areas, please tell your Padre. Huh? Please tell your, uh, uh, like we have... Lay leader, we call them. Huh? Uh, the people, who, the person, the leader who stands for the lay people, we call them lay leader. Go and tell them. Okay? Tell them we are not being empowered in the church. We are not being empowered in the That's the responsibility of the church. Okay? And Jesus was doing it, and he was doing it right. Then number two, huh? uh, going to point number two, this empowering is done so that uh, we can be sent out to be enriched with experience. This empowering is done not for us to sit in the church. Not for us to sit in our comfort zone. No. Today, we eat and get... Right? Ready to be slaughtered. <laughs> That's what they do. Before they cut the goat, they will feed the goat. Right? Feed well, and then they... Now, empowering happens. Great. For what empowering is happening? Empowerment happens so that we can be sent out to be enriched with experience. Jesus wants us to experience things in our life. Experience things in our life. So, uh, unless you are out there, you will never get experience. Okay, what kind of experience did these disciples had? Let's look at some of the experience the, the disciples had. Oh, I can use this. Huh? Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, yeah? <laughs> okay. Ah, okay. What kind of experiences they had? Number one, verse 17, it says, demons submit to them in Jesus' name. They were so excited, demons submit to them. Today, church members come to us being in pastor's ministry, huh? they will be depressed, they will be having problems, uh, they will be sick. Uh, I mean, doesn't, it's not wrong to come to pastor and pray. No, 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 no. it's not wrong. But <laughs> I'll send them back home. Yes. Many depression cases uh, are under my <laughs> uh, pastoral so-called care have been cured. I wasn't like, uh, I, I don't like pamper them so much. You know, I'll teach them to stand. I will empower them so that they can see demons submit to them in Jesus' name. If, if you are still coming to your pastor and say, Yo, I had a bad dream, pastor. The, the demon is coming and sitting on me. It's pressing me. Uh, I see it walking and disturbing me, tickling me and stick, talking something. That means... Sorry, yeah? we have not grown. Right? We cannot be handling this kind of... Demon must submit to you. Demon must submit to you. Right? Now, these disciples experienced that. Why and when? When they were empowered and when they went out. When they went out, they saw demons submit to them and were so excited. The, the disciples were so excited. They are excited. And then uh, Jesus said, verse 18, He saw Satan falling down from heaven like what? Like the sky, like lightning. These are experiences, people of God. You must experience because we are worshipping a living God. And this is our Father's world. That's what we call claim, right? Yeah. So remember that. Okay? Um, <laughs> we must experience this. Not being afraid of demon. 
not being afraid of Satan, not afraid of this world. We, we, uh, we have to experience victory over all this. What else they were experiencing? They saw, uh, they, trampling, uh, they trample on serpents and scorpions. Okay? Psalm 91, huh? All this Psalm 91, you, you, we all know. But then, uh, when it comes to danger, when it comes to fear, when it comes to uh, uh, hard situations and times, we'll forget everything. Because we never experienced God. Right? When the experiences come, people of God, there will be a great joy. And they were experiencing it. And 9, uh, verse 9, it says, uh, they, they were healing the sick, preaching the kingdom messages. Wow, I tell you, uh, have you experienced this in your life? Have you uh, experienced talking to a person and they get healed? Not necessarily physical healing. Uh, emotional, uh, mentally, people are disturbed. Uh, and, and they have problems, they are going through uh, difficult times, and when they come to you, when they speak to you, and they receive healing, have you all ever, uh, ever uh, experienced it? Have you? Please do. These are experiences that cannot be forgotten. Like now, um, for a reason I know, I know for a reason God brought me to this uh, workplace. Okay, the Star University, huh? for a reason. It's not easy, it's difficult. I work day and night. <laughs> Sister Jasmine, the day she saw me and then she was like, <laughs> right? It, it, it's tough. I work like seven days a week. Okay, because the, the, the documentation, paperwork, oh. right? Nowadays, it's not simple. Huh? Teachers, lecturers, <laughs> you all will know. Okay, uh, uh, it's not a difficult job, but takes a lot of time. It huh? takes a lot of time. So now, but I know why God put me there. Okay? Every week, at least three to five people are ministering. Three to five. This week was five. Okay? The people in need, in the broken world, I tell you, people of God, there's many people in this broken world. Are, 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 are in need. Okay, broke for children from broken family. Some of them are, are, are um, um, what they call that, they are paying their own fees, they are working and studying, you know, don't have money to eat. You know, all these kind of problems are countless. Countless. Okay. Students uh, from a uh, broken home, uh, parents are still fighting, uh, file for divorce. Uh, that was the latest one. And she was so traumatized. Okay, and, and yeah. The Lord will give you the eyes to see when you are out there. Okay? Now, people of God, healing. All these experiences, experiences. It's very important. And, and these experiences, uh, uh, this is why God empowers us. Remember, huh? you are in the church. We come back to church to be empowered and to go out and minister. Okay? It's not go out, come here, and then get some energy to, to go and drain out. No, no, no. It's not to drain out. To be empowered, we are coming here. Church life will be very exciting Ministry for pastors will be very exciting if people start to do what they should do. Okay? Now, and, and what happened will, uh, will be, uh, uh, the next slide, okay. What happened, uh, uh, yeah, you can only experience, uh, have this experience when you're out in the field, huh? remember that. Huh? And um, only then, huh, when you have experience and reach with experience, you'll come back and ask the pastors, You'll come back and ask the church, teach us more. Then you'll go back to what? Empowerment. Okay? Then you will, you will realize how uh, uh, the many areas that we don't know, the many areas that we need to be empowered, the many areas that we need to learn, and we will start to have a meaningful church life. Church life will be very meaningful. You'll come back to learn. 
What's next? What's next? I, uh, when I first went out to the, the, the community yeah, uh, in, uh, in Pride, um, um, so when I first went out, I, f- I felt like I don't know anything. There were parents' problem, parents' children' problem, parents' school problem, parents' parents' problem. You know, so many things were there going on. How to handle it? How? So when I brought my church members, they were, they were so excited. Then they said, I said, we need to go out and learn. Yes, let's go out to learn. Then we went out to empower, empower ourselves. That's where I went and took my HRDF training. You know, we, we need to, uh, the, the, the tra- HRDF certificate and all that. Uh, uh, in order for us to be equipped to face what is ahead of us. Experience. If you feel bored in the church, you are not in the world yet. If you feel church life is boring, if you feel uh, um, uh, trainings and sessions are boring, okay, hardly people come and, you know, why? Because they are not in the world yet. They have not stepped out to see what's happening in the world. If you go out, you will know how important trainings are how important empowerments are, how important certain areas to learn. Like today, uh, Mr. Patma is coming, huh? right? Yeah. Okay, he is pengarah, one of the penolong uh, pengarah. Huh? Pengarah, yeah. Okay, in uh, JKM. Uh, okay, I'm like excited. You know, we, we went and met him the other day. Okay, why? Why? Why in the midst of busyness we go and see this kind of people? Why? Because we want to learn. We, we want to know how to handle certain situations, but, uh, 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 but if you are not in the world, you will not be exposed to the needs of the world and experience uh, uh, what's happening in the world and you will never feel uh, all this is needed. You understand what I mean? Right? Okay. Now, uh, you can only experience this experience you will only have these experiences if you are out there in the field. Remember that. You don't go to work for the sake of going, going to work. Ask the Lord to open your eyes to see the needs of the people around you. Ask the people, ask the, ask the Lord to open your eyes to see. Okay? That's the first song, hymns, right? I was hungry, I was, I was thirsty, I was uh, uh, without clothes, I was without food. You will see it. Ask the Lord to open your eyes to experience it. Because God puts us in a place for a purpose. Where you are today, uh, it can be also your own personal business, okay, your own business. But if God put you there, God has a purpose. Open your eyes and see. Okay? Be empowered to be enriched with experience. Number three, the method of Jesus. He will enfold us with joy. Today, um, uh, if you look at people, uh, um, generally people, there, there's so much of sadness and stress in their face. Right? And <laughs> that's where sometimes uh, coming to church is also like, <sighs> for many people, because uh, when they come to church, the church also gives extra stress. <laughs> yeah, you're laughing. You're, sorry, yeah? no, no, no. Your pastor never tell anything. I never talked about church at all, Okay. Right? They come to church and, and hear people will be fighting and, you know, uh, gossiping and uh, further stress in the church. Okay? And they, they are not doing what they are supposed to do and then the pastor will be like banging the church with, uh, you, I mean, pulpit is a weapon for <laughs> pastors sometimes. Okay? Leaders and pastors now. Okay, not your pastor. Your pastor is very good. He's a very good man. Okay? So, so, there's no joy, right? But I tell you, people of God, God's way, God's method, He, he sent us out, He enriches us with experience so that we can be enfolded with joy. Enfolded with joy. Verse 21, okay? Verse 21, um, uh, you, you, you can read. Okay, can someone read? Maybe you all can wake up a little bit. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. 
Okay, uh, Jesus was with joy and Jesus was like uh, with so excitement and, and joy. <laughs> Imagine how the people were, would have been. Right? There was great joy there, the, uh, because the experiences in the field gives us joy. When you are out there in the field, you begin to see what's happening, begin to see in God's eye, and when God uses you in the field, people of God, there will be joy. Amen? Yes, indeed. I know what I'm talking about. I'm tired. You know, every day waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning. It's when I was a pastor. That's why my wife said, you know, uh, yeah, you were relaxing too much. No, you know, you think work outside easy? Okay, yeah, it's not easy, yeah. And I have to travel 50 kilometers to my workplace. It's tiring. But because of the experience, because I'm seeing my, my, the, the children there, you know, because of what God is doing through me, that's great joy, people of God. Great joy. And that, that is the complete blessing. That is blessing. And that's what we want in life. We want to experience fullness, fullness of His joy in our, our lives. Right? You want joy in your life? You want blessings in your life? Right? We all want that. Blessings are not just monetary. Not just material. Just because you have a very nice house doesn't mean you are blessed. There must be joy in your heart. Right? The joy of the Lord. Right? Even the poor, poorest poor people are happy. Okay? They may not have money, but they're happy. Today, we all have everything we have want, but most of the time we are not happy. Right? Uh, so, do you want that experience, that, uh, that, that, that real joy in your life? I tell you, people of God, first-hand experience definitely brings us great joy. Step out. Step out. So, um, uh, God rejoices in our efforts. Okay? He, he rejoices in our efforts and He rejoices and blesses His children. Verse 21, huh? He's blessing His children, you know. Wow! What more you want? What more you want? I don't want anyone to come and say, I bless you, God bless you. And all. No, 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 that doesn't work. God himself remembers and he himself is blessing people. He himself comes and blesses us. Right? And that is the greatest thing. He's glorified and the people who listen to him and goes out, experiences his blessing. Little things that we do People of God gives us that great joy. And now, there's newness in life. Newness in life. I tell you, Christian walk, you must have newness every moment of our life. In this journey, eh? Christian life is not a boring journey, you know, like what people think. It's not a routine. It's not a routine where uh, we come, we worship, we go, uh, come, worship, go out. We are not robots. That's what happened to the church today. That's what's happening to the church today. It's so boring. <laughs> the last Friday I met one boy, a coincidence, you know, from one of the Chinese, he's from a Chinese church. He said, sir, it's, I don't know, I'm losing interest to go to church. I'm a leader, a uh, youth leader, but I'm... Be, uh, uh, can you tell me what can I do? You know, I like music. I said, okay, we'll do something new. All right? I'm like working out. So people are losing interest because their life they, is in routine. It's the routine. Break that routine. I challenge you to break the routine like me. I broke it, right? The church, I'll be like sleeping late, waking up late, you know, the whole day, and then worrying for <laughs> no reason. Sometimes when we, we don't do things, huh? when, when we come routine, huh? we worry too much. For unnecessary things all, we'll be worrying. Today, many people's problem is, is, because, is that. 
we, our mind are empty, so it becomes devil's what? Yes. It's playground also. We play with us. Okay? So I tell you, people of God, they, it, it, there must be newness. Every time we, we, we gather, every moment of our life, there must be something new happening. Pop, 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 pop. Something new happening. Okay? Uh, something new God must be revealing. Something new you must see. Something new you must touch. Something new you must impact. Something new you must bring. It's not the old concepts, you know, somewhere in the Bible. No, no, it's not somewhere in the Somewhere in the internet we find something and then... We, doesn't work. Every time new. This sermon is new. I don't preach... Uh, what they call that? <laughs> Recycle sermon. But God must do something new. Right? New. Newness of life. So, uh, when, when, uh, when there's newness in life, uh, newness of life, uh, there will be new sight. Right? There will be new sight. Your eyes will begin to see new things. Okay? There will be, uh, you know, hope. In hopelessness. There will be no more hopelessness because hope takes over. There will be no meaningfulness, a meaninglessness. You know, why I'm living? What kind of life I'm living? You know, are you asking that kind of questions? Why my life is so much of problem? Go and see outside. People are suffering more than what, what you are suffering. They're having more problems than you. Okay, something new will always come. So last week we started the tabung for, for students who don't have food. Come. Anyone you know don't have food, come and take money from here and eat. New, new, new things. <laughs> Every time next week you'll ask me, if you come and ask me, I'll have another new thing. New things must emerge, people of God, because our, then our meaninglessness all will leave. We'll have a meaningful life. And then uh, our white life will become full, complete. I don't know. I don't know how your life is, people of God. Christians, I don't know how your life is. Okay? All I know, you're many years Christians. We all are many years Christians. At least five to ten years Christians. Uh, if, if, uh, pardon me if those who are the new converts and the ones who have uh, recently accepted the Lord uh, and all. Huh? But, but generally... In our mainline churches, we are all many years Christians. But we are not having a meaningful life. We are having so much of problems, sorrow. If I give an altar call, I will see one, one long stretch of uh, people will come and stand and wanting to pray. I mean, I don't know about church, but then, you know, anywhere we go. All Christians, you should be praying for others. You should be doing things for others. You must, you must, exp uh, uh, what, what they call that? You must uh, bring Christ to others. Instead, you're still asking for help. Help me, help me. You want your life to be meaningful? You want your life to be uh, um, hopeful? You want your life, a complete life, filled life, exciting life? Go out to see. Go out means we all are going out la. after church. Nobody is staying here. But when you go out, ask the Lord to open your eyes to see what He sees. Some very good work you all are doing in this church. Very good. But I don't know how many of you are involved. La. Very good social work. Huh? You are spending a lot of money. La, the, 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 the Tabitha Club. Huh? The one, one thing I know la, because Auntie will be always talking about it. Um, I was giving vegetable <laughs> during the MCO. Uh, on my own, a few of our, my friends and family members, we joined together and we were giving vegetables. And we also passed some to um, uh, Auntie Jasmine to, to give to the needy people. And you all are also doing it. I don't know how many of you are in it, involving. Right? I'm not here to encourage you to go and crowd there. But <laughs> opportunities are given. If opportunities are not given, create opportunities. New things must happen. Ask your padre, padre, there's a need for student ministry. There's a need for women's ministry. There's a need for men's ministry. Hey, men also need minister, you know? Today, many men are going through mental stress. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. We are all so much <laughs> looking at women. Sometimes men are neglected. The old people, the children, broken homes. How many broken homes? Nowadays, like so relaxed, only people want to divorce and want to separate. And the children, they, they are playing around with children. Now I'm handling one case. You know? So sad. It is sad. Okay? So, have a blessed life, people of God. There will be new energy. When you have newness of life, there will be great energy. I tell you, Christian walk will not be the same for you. Your journey with God will never be the same. Will never be the same. Stop talking about concepts. Stop talking about ideologies, visions and goals and whatnot. Yes, that's needed. Put that aside. Yes, uh, uh, it's needed. But be like Jesus. Do like Jesus, people of God. Uh, uh, be empowered. Come to church. Be empowered. Be empowered. Empowered not to sit in the church, but to go out to enrich. Be enriched with experiences. The next time when I come, I, or the next time when I meet your pastor or your, your, any of your church members, I must hear this. People are excited when they go out. They're excited. They went out. They're excited. They came back asking so many questions. That's where questions will trigger. Now you come to church, you just listen and go, right? The, the, when you are really going out, when you go out and, and experience things, huh, there will be many questions will arise. Many questions will arise. And the next chapter, huh, chapter 11, the one, one guy will be coming and asking about, uh, asking one question. Remember? Where is it? Huh? What is eternal life, right? He'll be asking, what is eternal life? Questions like that will, will, will come up. That's where the, the church people, the leaders, must be ready to answer questions. You know, there's so many questions now young people are asking. There's no answer. Right? Because they're in the world. If you are in the world, you will also ask that such question. And when you don't have answer, you will come back to us and be empowered. It's a circle. It's a circle. You know, it's a cycle. Sorry, not circle. It's a cycle. Okay, be empowered. Uh, and then you move out. Okay, you, 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 you uh, are sent out to enriched. And then you'll come back with experience and questions. And you'll be empowered and go to the next level. I tell you Christians, please don't waste your time. Please don't waste your time being a Christian. Please don't waste time being uh, in the church. Please don't waste time uh, listening and listening and listening and being empowered but not doing anything. Please. Harvest is plentiful. Seriously. Needs are tremendous. Don't talk about Christianizing people. No. I'm not talking about Christianizing. Jesus was not Christianizing them. Huh? <laughs> was Jesus Christianizing the disciples? No. But when you Go out and show His love. They will begin to see what is great. Amen? With that, people of God. Let's lead a meaningful Christian journey with God. Enjoy every blessing. Okay? Step out of the church and touch lives. Touch lives. If you don't know what to do, please come and ask me. I have plenty to do. <laughs> so many things we are involved. Okay? Uh, recently, we also started an NGO after the flood, uh, started with zero. We did, never had any money. No, I, it was not an NGO or what. Individually, I started with my students. Okay? I thought the churches are coming, going to come in, but at that point of time, that, that crucial time, nobody came. Okay? Or people were working in silo. Okay? But we came together and then we, we gave about 300,000 or more worth of things. 300,000, you know. <laughs> nothing. Me, nothing. People are still contacting me. They're asking for other advisors, for counselling, for, 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 to, to, to talk with someone. They're still calling and asking. I need people. We need people. If you are really in the world, you will know the harvest is plentiful. Okay, there's need. 
tremendous need. Remember, and may God uh, touch our hearts, empower us, enrich us, and give us experiences. Right? Let's move forward. Let us pray. Father, I can speak, Lord, but only your spirit can minister. We ask your spirit to minister to us. Minister to us. Open our eyes to see the needs of this world, O oh Lord. Open our eyes, O oh Lord, to, to experience, O oh Father, to, to, to uh, 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 send us out, O oh Lord, and open our eyes to see like you see, Lord. Give us the heart and eyes of compassion. Lord, give us, uh, open our hearts, O oh Lord, to see the needs of the people. Father, Thank you for empowering us in the church. Even today, you are empowering us a lot, reminding us that you are with us, you are, you are beside us, you are, uh, you are behind us, and you will take care of our, all our needs according to your riches in glory. And Lord, uh, you will take care of our physio physiological needs. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that the harvest is plentiful. Thank you for empowering us. Now, Father, send us out. Send us out to the right place, Lord, to see like you see, oh Father. And to, to enrich, to be enriched with experience. We want to see Satan falling, yes. We want to experience demon obeying us in Jesus. We want to see people getting healed. Lord, we want, we want to experience, oh Father, people's life being changed because of your love. And that will give us fulfillment, O oh Lord. That will give us joy. And that's what we want, O oh Father. In all our hopelessness, we want, uh, uh, all our hopelessness will leave. Meaninglessness will leave. We know. Help us, Father. We surrender to you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Congregation, please stand. As we proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation, please kneel as we go into a time of intercession. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Pray for the world. Loving God, we pray for the troubled nations, especially the war-torn countries like Ukraine and Russia. Let the leaders come to their senses and of both countries understand that only through tolerance and love and respect for one another that peace can be achieved. Also pray for all the politically instable countries Give wisdom 
to the authorities to run the countries fairly and justly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, Malaysia. Pray for the young Diputuan Nagong, the Prime Minister, and his cabinet ministers. Give wisdom and knowledge and understanding the needs of the people of this nation and rule fairly according to your will. Pray for the people who are affected by the recent flood in Bali. Pray that the relevant authorities and leaders make all the efforts to help the needy. Let all the parties, leaders, put their differences behind and work together to improve the economy of our country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we'll pray for our churches all throughout the world. Lord, Lord you are our Father who led our forefathers and taught us many things. We pray for our bishop and archbishops and all the disciples of Christ whom you have appointed to lead your children. Pray for our pastor, Reverend Jasminder, and his family. Strengthen them with your wisdom and give them good health as they lead your children to reveal the good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the suffering. Dear God, we acknowledge that you are our healer. Therefore, bring all those who are sick and bedridden and give them the good health and let them recover from their illness. Help them in their troubles, heal their illness and recover soon and be a witness for you. Bless all the frontliners and the caregivers. Strengthen them as they carry their duties. Pray for all those who are gone before us to the Lord. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the sake, sake of your Son, son our, our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. We're now going to a time of confession. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have, we have sinned, sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, to allegiance to weakness, to our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. We are assured of God's forgiveness and the words of the absolution. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Congregation, please stand. As we receive God's peace, we are committed to be peacemakers for his glory. For we are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We share the sign of peace with one another.
As we remain standing, we continue with the Eucharistic part of our service. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Please kneel as we continue to pray. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our God. For he is your living word, through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and raised him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us as body and blood. Our Lord Jesus, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice together. Accept through him our great high priest. This our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of a divine majesty, Renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. As our Lord and Savior taught us to pray, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The scripture reminds us that God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So we humble ourselves as we pray the prayer of humble access together. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. 
great mercies. We are not worthy so much to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. with faith receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which is shed for you eat and drink remembrance that Jesus died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world blessed are those who are called to his supper Lord we are not worthy to receive you but only say the word and we shall be healed as Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Welcome to the Lord's table. As we give thanks, we kneel to rededicate our lives in the prayer of thanksgiving and rededication. Together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. 
Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us now and always. be seated for some quick announcement. First of all, we want to take this opportunity to welcome all those who are here to worship together and those who are joining us through the online service platforms. A special welcome once again to our speaker, Dr. Edward Devadasan, for sharing not only the word, but also his life experiences and ministry. As we continue to grow in Christ and glow for Christ, may Christ be the focus of our life. Today, as we commemorate and celebrate Social Concern Sunday, we just want to take this opportunity to thank all those who have been part in, part, uh, partnership, in partnership in this ministry. As you have touched and been a blessing for many lives and family, we got a short video in regards to the ministries that we have done as a church, a short video, and thereafter I'll follow up with the announcement. The video in regards to the ministries that we have been able to do as a church, continue to pray, continue to serve together, and continue to contribute towards this ministry. Our main sanctuary renovation is ongoing. I will just browse through the uh, images of how the new design is going to look like. Do pray for smooth completion of the project in due time. Our healing service is ongoing every Wednesday. Reverend Kenan John Ganabadi comes. Please bring along those who need healing touch from the Lord, and especially for those who have not known Christ, that this will be an opportunity for them to come to experience the touch of the Lord. Our youth fellowship is ongoing every Sunday from 8.15 to 9 a.m. Please encourage our young people to take part. Our intercessory prayer is ongoing every Tuesday. We're still looking out for a caretaker. Do pray. Do share the info with others. 
Our tithes, free will offering, weekly offering, a small change. Please uh, send all the details to our church phone number, not for the number that is stated there. We have change of the treasurer. Please uh, send all the details to our church phone number once the transactions are done. Blessed birthday and wedding anniversaries. For those who are celebrating your birthdays and wedding anniversaries, can we please invite you to stand so we can say a prayer for you? Anyone here? Right. Nevertheless, let me say a prayer for those who are joining us online. Father, we thank you for all those who are celebrating the birthdays and wedding anniversaries. Bless them. Keep them under the care and the shadow of your wings. May they rejoice in your love wherever they are now. As they enter into a new year, they are entering, Lord, to experience the experiences that you, Lord, have for them as you empower and enfold them with joy. Continue, Lord, bless them and their families and all their undertakings for your glory and praise. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Congregation, please stand as we sing the closing hymn, the recessional hymn. for our church together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as the light of the world. Help us to grow and to glow as his light. Empower us with your Holy Spirit to reveal Christ and to disciple others, to experience your love for your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us bless the Lord together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget none of His manner. Praise His name. 
Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Continue to grow in Christ and glow for Christ.